If you're at all familiar with Buddhism, you've probably heard that attachment causes suffering. So on a day like Valentine's Day, when we're celebrating love and couples and stuff like that, you might be wondering, is this a, a thing that I can't do as a Buddhist? Well, I want to tell you, Buddhists actually are very into love. Uh, I'll do a short loving kindness meditation at the end of this video. And in the meantime, I want to just let you know, my teacher um, and Tibetan Buddhist Lama, Harvey Aronson, has this wonderful book, Buddhist Practice on Western Ground, that I highly recommend. And there are three chapters in here about basically attachment in the Western psychological context, where it's a good thing, and in traditional Buddhist language, where at least the word attachment has been used to translate words like tangha, which means thirst or craving. And obviously in that context, it's a bad thing. So Harvey is here to help you understand what it even means <laughs> to have healthy attachment as a Buddhist. And if you're interested in the basics of Buddhism, I do have a free email course on the Four Noble Truths. You will find a link to that in the show notes below so you can get started learning all about Buddhism. But for now, I want to focus on loving kindness or metta, which is the first of what are called the four divine abidings or Brahma Viharas or boundless states. They're uh, loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And since I'm focusing on the first of these today, loving kindness, I'll just say that it is about the wish for yourself and others and really all living beings to have happiness and the causes of happiness. Buddhism is very much about cause and effect. So if we're doing good things now, we're putting good things into motion and we'll get good effects from that in the future. So loving kindness is may you be well. May you be doing the things now that are gonna make sure that you continue to be well. And the thing about this kind of loving kindness is that it's not possessive. We're not trying to own anyone or to keep them in our orbit or something. We're just with an open, boundless heart, wishing them well, wishing for all good things to come to this person. Health, prosperity, spiritual awakening, whatever happiness might mean to you or might mean to someone else, you're wishing for them to have that. So that sounds pretty simple, right? The thing that might make it a little complicated is that we're trying to cultivate boundless loving kindness. So that's boundless toward ourselves. If I do the same annoying thing over and over and over again, if my mind won't stop chattering when I'm trying to meditate, that's when it's harder to have boundless compassion for ourselves. When your partner is doing that annoying thing that they do again and again, it sounds like a lot of couples have um, dishwasher loading issues. <laughs> so if your partner just loaded the dishwasher in a way that is morally reprehensible, for the thousandth time, can you have boundless loving kindness toward them in that moment? Can you look at whoever is on the other side of the political spectrum from you and also have this boundless loving kindness toward them? So the boundlessness is both in terms of, I can connect with myself or I can connect with someone else no matter what the circumstances are because there's this core of, of loving intention. There's also the boundlessness in terms of like the object or the recipient of our loving kindness. I can offer this to anyone, even if they are behaving in ways that are very hurtful. I'm not saying you have to condone any bad behavior or help anyone to do bad behavior, but if you can recognize their humanity, Kristen Neff, who uh, has done a lot of great work on self-compassion, identifies recognizing shared humanity as a really important part of the process of cultivating compassion. So even if somebody is out there behaving horribly, can you recognize that they're coming from a very human place? So with that as a little introduction to loving kindness meditation, let's try it. And I'm gonna guide it today in a way that's oriented towards someone else. It's Valentine's Day. You can bring to mind someone you love or care for. But if you want an extra challenge, you can try applying it to someone who annoys you or to yourself or to all living beings. So if you wanna rewatch this video again later and do the meditation in a different way, I totally encourage that and just see what happens. When you do these kinds of meditations that are about opening your heart, cultivating boundless states, you might feel boundless love. 
you might also feel annoyed or closed off. And those things are really important to learn as well because they're the obstacles to these boundless states. So the more you can pull them up, uproot them, the more you can cultivate that boundlessness. Okay, let's meditate together. First, bring to mind someone you love, someone who's dear to you, someone for whom it's easy to feel that open heartedness. So you can start with settling into your seat, whether it's on a chair or on a cushion. Just take a couple of deep breaths out, release any stress or tension from the day. And then bring your attention to your heart center. You can begin by calling on the sacred, awakened, fully loving aspect of yourself that is always present and always ready to help you with a meditation like this. So just wordlessly connect with that part of yourself. Maybe ask it for help. If you feel it respond, that's wonderful. And if not, don't worry, it is there and it is responding. So with this kind of charged up ability to feel love and kindness, now we'll use some very old, very traditional sayings adapted for modern time to cultivate loving kindness. May you be well. May you be well. May you have happiness and the causes of happiness. May you have happiness and the causes of happiness. May you have health, freedom from illness. May you have health and freedom from illness. May you have all the resources you need. May you have all the resources you need. May your good qualities bring you joy. May your good qualities bring you joy. May you have happiness and the causes of happiness. Before we close this meditation, just bring your person to mind again, mentally thank them, maybe with a bow or with a gesture of some kind. Let them dissolve away into light and just take in if you're feeling a little more open hearted, if you're feeling a little more loving, take in what that feels like in your body. Notice that you have the capacity to feel this way. And finally, thank or appreciate that sacred aspect of yourself that showed up to help you with this meditation. Finally, we close the meditation. Thanks for meditating with me. I hope this uh, helps you connect with a boundless state of loving kindness toward yourself, folks you love, folks who annoy you, and all living beings. Happy Valentine's Day.